Okay, so it looked like my counterweight solution for the Slalom Telescope worked. It did not bang into the tripod legs today for the Fireworks Galaxy, which it did a couple of nights ago. And I had about an inch to spare. So I think I'm going to be all set because the Fireworks Galaxy was in the worst position possible. So that's good. And I'm going to be doing broadband, of course, which you want to do for... Uh, galaxies, although you could merge in HA, but I, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go with LRGB, and I have a, a two-inch CLS filter in front of all my other filters, so I'm using a light pollution filter, and I'm doing 30-second exposures for luminance, and even with that, my mean readout is really high. I'd prefer that to be down near a thousand, and it it would be if I were still using gain zero, but I've been having problems with gain zero. I, I see vertical banding too often with that with that setting, and it's hard for me to get that those streaks out. And I just to me, it, it seems like the the data looks cleaner when you're using unity gain of 139, at least in my case. So I'll deal with the high mean readout. I'll deal with the short exposures. It'll be a lot more data they have to deal with. And uh, one other issue is um, when you're doing such short exposures, I'm dithering after each exposure. That's a lot of dithering, and that's a lot of time being eaten up when I could be doing more images. And uh, my friend Doug is actually using a newer version of SG Pro where they actually let you um, set how how often you want to dither after every third or fourth or fifth frame. And when you're doing short exposures, you don't need to do a dither after each frame. So I'm going to have to upgrade to that new software so I can skip dithering at least four or five times, at least after the fourth or fifth image when you're doing short exposures. So, okay, that was a mouthful. So let's take a look at one raw image. <laughs> Did I mention I live near an airport? Although, I'm not sure what that is. Maybe that's a satellite. That's kind of thin. Usually, uh, the airplanes have brighter lights because I'm really close to the airport and they're already descending by that time. So, this is probably, maybe this is a satellite. I'm not sure. It'll be averaged out. I'm not going to throw it away. So, I can already see my galaxy right there. If, if you can see it in one raw image, that's a good sign. I'm sure it'll come in pretty good uh, when I stack a bunch of these. And my um, whole image looks pretty clean. I'm not seeing too many dust specks. Maybe one there, one there. So hopefully uh, the flats will do their job. And this is going to be a multi-day project. I got up to a, a well, I, I had to restart. I had some raw settings. I mean, I had some settings in my equipment profile that were wrong. And it was screwing up my stars. But, so I, I threw away about two hours worth of data tonight. I'm starting over again. It's kicking myself, but that's the way it goes with this hobby. But anyway, I'll probably see you on day two or three. See you later. So here's how guiding is looking right now. And it's hard to get a good readout on guiding when you're dithering so often. So I cleared it out. It would be nice if it could stay in the point four range. Let's see. Okay. If it stays there, I'm cool with it. I'll see you later. Hey, I am working on two galaxies at the same time. I captured only about an hour's worth of the fireworks galaxy earlier today. And now I'm going to try and focus on NGC 891, which I've heard some people call the Outer Limits Galaxy. I've done this before, but maybe I can do it a little better this time. And... I'm going to start off with um, RGB, red, green, blue, and then finish with luminance. My gain is set for 139, and right now the mean readout for red is 518. And let's see uh, what one raw image looks like for red. Okay, well, that's pretty good that I can actually see it in a single raw image for red. Uh... Well, I'll be back. Um, it's getting kind of late. 
and I'm half asleep. I'm hoping I can pass out and and everything will run smoothly. All right, I'll be back. Okay, a couple of days have passed. Um, actually, I had three cleaner nights, and I actually captured three galaxies. The Fireworks Galaxy, uh, NGC 891, and M33, the Triangulum Galaxy. I didn't finish processing that one yet, so I'll just stick that on to some other video. But I, I am getting, I am tired. This is a lot of work. It's supposed to be fun, but man, I'm working. But uh, let's start with the Fireworks Galaxy. Uh, this is, uh, I captured, uh, uh, let's see, four and a half hours, a half hour each of RGB and three hours of luminance data. So that's what blue looks like. And so that's a half hour of blue, a half hour of green, and a half hour of red. Now with you know RGB, you can pretty much count on it that you're going to get data for each filter. It's not like narrowband where it's hit or miss that I pick up any oxygen or not. That, narrowbands, there's a lot of guessing in that one as to how it's going to turn out in the end. But it's RGB is a little more predictable. But uh, now here is the, the interesting one is the luminance data, which I had three hours of data on. And I had a line going across the corner. And I don't know if you, how well you can see that in the video, um, but I have a feeling my telescope started to pass through my cable line that goes through my backyard. I, that's the only thing I can think of, and I, I didn't spot it in my uh, raw images. So, But I left it in there, and I, I did a little repair work on it uh, when I merged everything together. Uh, you know, if I were working in a scientific laboratory, I'd probably be fired for what I did. But hey, in my own backyard, I'm the boss. I do what I want. And, you know, how I fixed it when I merged all the data, I'll give you a quick demo here. I used clone stamp. It comes in handy sometimes. Like if I set this to 10, and if I create, uh, let's see. See how, uh, I don't know if you can tell what I'm doing here. I'm just sort of massaging the data. Do you see it kind of going away there? <laughs> eh, but I did it much more carefully. But you can see how it's erasing. Now, you don't want to do this. I mean, what if I, like, erased a star or something? And that star had a planet. And that planet had intelligent life, you know? I just erased intelligent life so I can have a prettier picture. That's not cool. But anyway, but you can see what I'm getting at with that clone stamp. You can work the data. But I did that on the final image. You don't want to do anything before a combine. So let's get rid of that. Okay, so that's how the fireworks looks. Oh, well, actually, I didn't show you the final image. Let's do that. Let's close this stuff off. Ah, nope. That's not that one. That was my NGC891. That was the fireworks galaxy. That's how it turned out. I think it looks pretty good for four and a half hours of data. You know, um, I wasn't going, I wasn't trying to master every pixel. I, I, with all these clear nights, I wanted to go out, you know, deep sky galaxy hunting. You know, I wanted to try and capture lots of objects. That was my goal for the past few nights. And I think I did that. Okay, let's move on to the NGC 891 galaxy. Uh, let's get rid of that. All right, well, since you've already seen this one in advance, that's what my galaxy looks like. And these are the RGB and luminance images. And like I said before, all the filters produce data. This is blue, green, my luminance data, and my red data. But the, the thing about this one is it, it the colors, uh, the stars are sort of, they're devoid of color. The, the stars didn't come out good at all. And I'm going to, I put the, the Fireworks Galaxy in Astro Bin, but I didn't put this one in Astro Bin yet. I want to work the data and 
see if I can figure it out. That the colors just weren't working for me on this one. I'm not sure why. So, but what's cool about this one is that not only did I capture uh, this galaxy, but if you look closely, I don't know how well you can. Let me do this. There's a galaxy there, and there's a galaxy there. So let's go in the preview here. There's a little one. I don't know how well you can see it there. And here's the other galaxy. Pretty cool. I love finding those kind of surprises when you look closely at an image. I think that's cool when you're picking up these far away distant galaxies. And you consider they're little specks in this picture. But man, you just think how big they really are. Is there another one there? Let me see. No, I thought I saw another one. But maybe there is somewhere around here. You never know. Well, that's all I got. Thanks for watching. I don't know when I'm going to have time to process M33 because I think we have yet another clear night tonight. And my nephew's coming over right now. We're going to play uh, Mario Kart on my Nintendo Switch. So I'll be busy. See you later.